class, this is section 6.2, and in this video we are going to discuss different approximations for second derivatives. Let's look at the Taylor series for n equals 3. It looks like this. And I suppose we should write down the remainder explicitly too. So let's take this Taylor series and take the other Taylor series with replacing delta x with minus delta x instead and we replace all the plus signs with the minus signs, x naught equals minus delta x. This becomes a minus delta x. This delta x squared stays the same. Delta x cubed does not stay the same. And the remainder actually stays exactly the same. Um, well, not exactly, um, we have a tilde over here because we want um, r3 tilde is equal to delta x4 over 4 equatorial. That remains the same because it's a square times f4 theta for tilde, all right? So we have these two different versions of the Taylor series. And again, we add them together, we sum them together to obtain this equation instead. And so if we are looking for an approximation of the second derivative, we can solve for the f double prime x naught term, get this, get this equation, f double prime x naught equals f x naught plus delta x minus 2 f x naught plus f x naught minus delta x over delta x squared with a remainder minus r3 plus r3 tilde over delta x squared. In other words, for delta x small, f double prime x naught is approximately f x naught plus delta x minus 2 f x naught plus f x naught minus delta x over delta x squared with error term given by this minus r3 minus r3 tilde over delta x squared term or um, when you simplify it out it becomes delta x squared over 4 factorial f fourth derivative of um, so there's a minus sign here zeta 3 uh, zeta 4 plus f4 derivative of zeta 4 tilde so that's your error term and it's very often useful to write this down geometrically a little bit. So what this says is that you can tell the second derivative of a function by looking at the function's value at f x naught. That is x naught. This is x naught plus delta x. This is x naught minus delta x. And what this means is that you can look down the value of the, the double second derivative of f by looking at one time the x naught minus delta x position minus two times the x naught position plus one times the x naught minus delta x position. And this gives us some information about how we can find approximate values of the second derivative. Let's look through an example. Let's try to approximate arc tan, the second derivative of the arc tan of 2, given that we know that the arc tan of 1.9 is 1.086, the arc tan of 2 is 1.107, and the arc tan of 2.1 equals 1.126. And these are values you can easily find using a computer, whereas a computer might not be able to differentiate certain complicated functions. So according to our formula, um, it makes sense that we should set x0 is 2 here, since that's the value that we're trying to approximate. And then we have um, the arc tan for 1.9 and 2.1, and these are both 0.1 away from our x naught. So it makes sense that our delta x is equal to 0.1. And of course, it makes sense that our f is equal to arc tan. And let's plug it in to the formula and see what happens. We get then that arc tan double prime 2 is approximately arc tan 2.1 minus 2 r10 2 plus r10 of 1.9 over 0 0.1 squared. That's exactly what the formula says. And this gives us equals to 1.126 minus 2 times 1.107 plus 1.086 over 0 0.01 and when you do the calculation you'll end up with negative 0 
So that's our estimate for second to arc 10. And let's see how close we got. So arc 10, um, you may know that arc 10 of x, the derivative of arc 10, is going to be equal to 1 over x squared plus 1. And therefore, the second derivative is going to be equal. Oh, let's just use the prime notation, make things a little bit easier. Arc 10 prime is this. Arc 10 double prime. You can just use um, the quotient rule. So you have the lower squared, low d high, less high d low. So that's going to be minus 1 times 2x. So that's the second derivative of, of arc 10 x. And arc 10 plugging in 2, we get minus 4 over 25, which is equal to a negative 0 0.16. And this is not too far away from our approximation. And you can see that this makes a pretty good approximation. So let's consider partial derivatives now. Let's consider the partial of u, which is equal to um, partial u, partial x squared, partial u, partial y squared. I'm going to use the notation LAP rather than the triangles because we really have lots of triangles running around and I don't want that to be confusing. So let's try to approximate the Laplacian using the same technique. And first, uh, so we can clearly just use the, our second derivative approximation for both the x and y derivative, like so. Actually, let's label these all x0, y0. Uh, let's make this a bit clearer. Let's call this x0, y0, x0, y0. And then we can apply our formula approximation formula for both the x and y derivatives. So that's our approximation for the x derivative, and let's do one for the y derivative too. And there you have it. And this seems really complicated, but very often we make a simplifying assumption, and we assume that the difference in x is the same as the difference in y, just to make our lives a little bit easier. And when we make that assumption, we can find that the Laplacian of u at x0 and y0 is approximately, um, this all should be approximates by the way, I should have got it wrong, it's approximately, so we get the Laplacian of u is equal to u, um, the four terms summed together, minus the four u x0 y0 over delta x squared. Visually, we can see that about to calculate the Laplacian, we basically need to look at four times, minus four times rather, the center, we need to, let's call the center point x0, y0. And we need to call, call in um, one time of uh, delta x, one time of minus delta x, one time of uh, delta y, and one time of delta y here, minus delta y. So the point is that to calculate the second derivative, we need to calculate the weights of uh, these five entries, but minus four times the center, and one time all the four parts on the axes.